that's it. I'm very firm, yeah, because I know it doesn't, you know, I don't want to use my time in a dialogue that isn't an actual dialogue, yeah. So I just encourage them in what they're doing and send them on their way, yeah. On the other hand, we have um, some friends in the local area who are Catholic nuns, and we'll meet with them from time to time, and we really have a lot in common. And we're, you know, I mean, they believe in God, and we don't, but that's incidental, you know, um, because uh, with them, we'll often talk about women's role in religion. Yeah, and uh, what's, you know, what do you think about women's, uh, women becoming priests? Yeah, it's the same thing in Buddhism. What do you think about bhikshuni ordination and letting the women take full ordination, you know? And we'll ask them, and they're, they're quite open-minded. So we're able to talk about what the Vatican is saying, yeah? And they'll really tell us what they think. They don't feel like they have to um, hold up the church at all costs. Yeah, they feel like they can share their own opinions, which differ from the church with us. Yeah, so we have many, many interesting conversations. So people who I can really dialogue with, I dialogue because I quite enjoy that. Yeah. But people who you can't dialogue with, I just am very firm, and that's it. Yeah? But like I said before, the real thing is, is to look inside. And, you know, how much do, do we appreciate the variety of Buddhist traditions? Yeah? And do we respect all the different traditions? And can we distinguish you know, people who call themselves Buddhist but don't really follow what the Buddha taught from people who are genuine Buddhists. And how do we deal with those people? And how do we make sure we don't become one of those people? Yeah? And invent our own kind of Buddhism according to what fits our own ego. Yeah? Because there's a lot of people they don't like, you know. I, well, uh, I'm telling you a lot of stories tonight. Hmm. I was at a Buddhist teachers conference in, um, in New York State mm, about two, three years ago. And in uh, the U.S., there's a number of lace teachers, yeah. Uh, and I was very surprised at this conference that about, I mean, there were many lay teachers and about half of them were not sure if they believed in rebirth. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, because this is, is, you know, a kind of a core belief in Buddhism. Yeah, it's a fundamental, <laughs> yeah. And, okay, not all Buddhists, you know, are convinced in rebirth, yeah. But most people will accept it provisionally or put it on the back burner or whatever. But if you're a Buddhist teacher, to not believe in rebirth or not be sure if you do, I thought that was very peculiar. Yeah, very peculiar. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it, it's um, very important really to assess teachers and within, you know, different traditions. And His Holiness Dalai Lama always recommends, you know, when you're looking at teachers, you know, attend their talks and see if they're teaching the basic fundamental principles of the, the Dharma or not. Yeah. And let that be the, the initial way that, that you check out a teacher. Yeah. OK.
Okay, so I've kind of rambled on and on, <laughs> telling you lots of stories. Um, what I'd like you to do now is uh, ask some questions or make some comments. We can have a bit of a discussion. Yes. Uh huh. My question is: Can a woman, a woman uh, be enlightened as a Buddha? Okay, so he's saying two days ago I was giving a, a a talk on the path to Nirvana, and his question is: Can a woman be enlightened as a woman? He is very courageous to ask that question, isn't he? Yes, that's why I mean you're sitting in a room with a lot of women. <laughs> yeah. And we're strong women, aren't we? And we're not going to take any of this blah, blah stuff. Yeah. Yes, the Buddha said you can be enlightened as a woman. Why not? Are you inherently a man? Are you inherently a woman? On what basis is, is, you know, our sex determined? On the basis of a conglomeration of atoms and molecules in your body. Yeah? Is a formation of atoms and molecules who you are? Is that your identity? Yeah. We aren't our body, are we? We are not our body. And our mind, does our mind have, have gender? Do you have a woman's mind or a, mind's, a man's mind? The mind is formless. How can you say it's from one sex or the other? Okay. So men are from Mars. Women are from Venus, yes. <laughs> So this is something, actually, I feel that in Buddhism nowadays, we need some modernization. There's certain, you know, uh, Buddhists who are extremely conservative when it comes to women. Yeah. And I think if Buddhism is going to make it in the 21st century in modern societies, we have to have gender equality except when it comes to carrying heavy things. <laughs> then the guys can do it. <laughs> okay, but this is one very strong tenet at Shravasti Abbey, yeah? Gender equality. And it's quite interesting because most, you know, I meet many men in the West who are, uh, when they hear, you know, about some of the statements about women, either in the scriptures or made by some teachers, they're very upset by it. The men are upset. Yeah. So we didn't jump on you and beat you up. <laughs> Buddhists are supposed to be uh, peaceful, non-aggressive. Yes. But today we hear about Buddhism in Thailand, in Burma, mm. not by the Buddhists, but by the monks themselves. Mm. Ah. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. This is a good, what's happening in Burma is a good example of Buddhist fundamentalism. And in one way, it actually isn't even Buddhist because they're not citing Buddhist tenets as a reason for suppressing the Rohingya people. Yeah, they're just using the name Buddhism, you know, and it's an, eth an ethnic con uh, conflict which they're making into a religious conflict. 
and it's disastrous. And, you know, I get asked about this a lot in the West because people usually do look at Buddhism as a peaceful religion. And they say, what in the world is going on in Burma? <coughs> and I say, I don't understand it either, and I totally do not agree with it. You know, and I'm sure if the Buddha were alive today, he would not agree with, you know, what the Buddhists in Burma are doing towards the minority population of the Rohingya. Yeah. And I think it's important as Buddhists that we speak out about this. You know, I mean, I don't know anybody in Burma to talk to. to people sometimes say to me, can you help change this? I don't know anybody, you know. But I can say that the people who are doing this are improperly invoking Buddhism as a reason for discrimination. Whereas in Buddhist tenets themselves, there is no such discrimination. And, you know, if you're really following Buddhism, you would not have that kind of attitude towards a minority population. Mm -hmm. Actually, similar to the Right, exactly. Yeah, it's very similar to, um, you know, what the ex the fundamentalist uh, Muslims are doing. Yeah, that isn't doesn't at all represent Islam in general. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Venerable, for sharing. Uh, my main main questions on fundamentalism. One is if you see friends becoming more fundamentalist in their, think in their thinking mm -hmm. and their deeds, what are some skillful ways to help them? And secondly is um, how to prevent ourselves from becoming fundamentalistically against people who are fundamentalist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, can you, uh, the first one, ha you know, uh, how to help friends. Can you give me an example? And can you hear the mic again? <laughs> um, I think, uh, for example, like um, something that's more particularly disturbing to me is when um, my longtime Buddhist friends, mm -hmm. um, some of them who used to see themselves as Tibetan Vajrayana Buddhists and kind of um, consciously or unconsciously looked down on Theravadan Buddhism, suddenly encountered early Buddhism, and uh, suddenly, uh, because of various reasons, thoughtfully decided that uh, Vajrayana and Mahayana, Vajrayana is definitely Hinduism, and Mahayana, all that is like an exaggeration, and only, uh, only selected early Buddhist thinking is proper Buddhist. And it has um, maybe in their enthusi enthusiasm, uh, are trying to convert us, to, to help okay. us. <laughs> so friends who used to be Mahayana and practice Tibetan Buddhism, then learning Theravada and becoming fundamentalist Theravadas and trying to convert you. <laughs> and you're wondering what they're going to believe next week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for me, it hurts because, um, first of all, when you're practicing Tibetan Buddhism, you're not even supposed to look down on Theravada Buddhism. Exactly. And secondly, exactly. when you practice Theravada Buddhism, you're not supposed to then think that the others are, are bad. Yeah. Um, and I'm very disturbed by this kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah. And this, unfortunately, we find this kind of thinking too much in the Buddhist world. And it comes... You know, because people, I mean, you see here why the Buddha said that grasping at the true existence of the person is the source of samsara. Because everybody who thinks my group, my Buddhism is the best and yours is inferior is grasping at inherent existence, which shows that they're, you know, they have... <laughs> The fundamental ignorance is very present in their minds, you know, but they're not seeing it. 